you knocked him down. Why don't you try knocking me down now? No, no. In the ring. In the ring. Tommy Gunn only fights in the ring. Come on, let's get out of here. My ring's outside. Yeah. Let's do it. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Backtrack Cinema. In this review, we'll be taking a look at Rocky Five. So get some popcorn, get a drink, get comfy, and let's talk Rocky Five. That are alive, you are coming with Act me. Hurt me. Coming here to Raven. Nothing is over! Rocky V was released in 1990, directed by John Alvinson, and starring Sylvester Stallone, Sage Stallone, Talia Shire, Burt Young, and Tommy Morrison. Reluctantly retired from fighting, Rocky takes charge of Mickey's gym and agrees to train a young prodigy who's hungry for success. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Backtrack Cinema, and welcome to my review of Rocky V. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Rocky V, and we'll have a good discussion on Rocky V. And also, what is your favorite Rocky film? Let me know in the comments below, and we'll have a great discussion about all of it. Now, there is not a bad movie in this franchise to me, but this movie is definitely most people's least favorite. That's what I see anyway. Maybe there's some people who hate this movie, um, but for the most part, I think it's gained a lot of fans over the years. I loved it and as a kid when I first watched it in the theater. I thought the street fight was awesome and everything like that. But when you grow up, you mature, you put your review glasses on when you go to do a movie review. It, it has flaws. It has flaws. But I still enjoy this movie. Like like I said, I don't think there's a bad movie in this franchise. And one thing right away, it starts off with showing uh, the Drago fight from Rocky IV. But the way they cut it, there's kind of like a real dreadfulness, a sense of dread to it where, with the music, Bill Conti's score and everything that's going on. Like, you know, something, there's going to be like repercussions of what's happening here. And then we find out that Rocky, you know, he's shaking like a leaf after. He goes, get Adrian Tony and... Then we find out, you know, he's he's got like Parkinson's or he's he's suffer, he's suffered real brain damage, and but then they don't go anywhere with this, and that was one of the biggest problems for me with it. I was hoping we we're going to see something with it, and the danger of him fighting in the street would be even more amped up, even more. How Rocky was going to handle this challenge in his life now? He goes bankrupt, he's retired, and having that brain damage and seeing where it was going to go, but it doesn't. They kind of just cut that thing. They, they, they cut it off. You know what I mean? And I know there's a work print to this film that kind of shows a bit more of that. And like, I would love to see him and I actually re-edit this one, recut a director's cut of this film. I do like how we go back to the old neighborhood. I really like how they try to, they try to capture the first movie, the feel of the first movie. Rocky Balboa does it better. It's, it's just not, it's execution, right? It's not executed as well as it could have been. I think maybe Stallone should have just directed this himself. But I always like the aesthetic of Philadelphia. It just suits Rocky so much. Like, just like when we have horror icons or any icon, character icon, like when we have like Freddy in, in Elm Street, and Jason at Camp Crystal Lake, and Michael Myers in Haddonfield, and whatever character we're talking about, Rocky just, you know, just belongs in Philadelphia. He's part of the aesthetic almost, you know what I mean? And I just like how they tried to bring that back. Rocky takes on a young fighter in Tommy Gunn, played by Tommy Morrison, which a quick, quick, cool, uh, interesting fact. He's actually related to John Wayne. John Wayne's name was Marion Morrison. And I believe Tommy Morrison is like a great nephew or, or something like that. I can't exactly remember, but that was kind of an interesting uh, fact about this movie. But we see him take him on, putting all his knowledge, all his heart in the and the, and the Tommy gun. But what ends up happening is that Rocky loses sight of what's important. His family, the racial between his son, he's ignoring everybody. And, and that's not very Rocky like, and it puts a real rift between Rocky jr. And Rocky Adrian and Rocky. And that's still a really relatable theme. You can relate to all that stuff going on. Cause I think we've all been there at one time where we've not paid a hundred percent focus on our families or our wife or, or our child, uh, whatever, you know, external circumstances going on, whatever, right? So I like how he still makes it relatable, and we could segue into Adrian. This is very much Adrian's uh, movie, I find. A lot of great moments with Adrian, always bringing Rocky back. I just love that moment where they're hashing it out in the street, and Rocky thinks he's just going backwards in life, and she's trying to tell him, you know, you know, this is your life. We are your life. You know, your son, your son needs you right now. 
And I just love that. The performance of Talia Shire is fantastic here. Love that moment. I know Tommy makes you feel great. He makes you feel like you're winning again. But you're losing us. Rocky, you're losing your family. And you get other great character moments too, man. You get a great flashback memory with Rocky at Mickey's gym. And he's remembering Mickey and him training and just a great moment with that great Rocky music of him giving Rocky the pendant, the, the Rocky Marciano's cufflink. You know what I mean? And just the whole emotion behind it all. He's just remembering Mickey and how Mickey was always this angel on his shoulder, was always that driving force or one of the driving forces of him, right? Just a really, really good character moment. Get up, you son of a bitch. Mickey loves you. But we see Tommy Morrison a turn on Rocky. You know, he gets sucked in by the business, something that Rocky wanted to avoid. This promoter and Duke, who's, who's you know, owns Tommy now, wants to see Rocky and him fight. And they fight in the street at the end. Things get out of hand at, at Andy's bar, and, and they, they fight or the Lucky Seven Tavern, and they fight in the street at the end. And I do like the street fight. I always like the street fight. I'm not big on the music going on with it, going like the way it's scored and all that. But I do like the street fight. It shows how Rocky was like this street fighter at one time and how he's, this is like his world. This is what he, how he used to, you know, fight in the streets. I mean, and how Tommy's like, this not, I mean, Tommy's got to backstab him just to freaking get up, get one up on him. But um, the street fight, yeah, I do. I don't mind the street fight at all. It gets a little over the top. Where the movie really just kind of falls is the moment Tommy Gunn shows up. I just don't find him to be an interesting character. I think we all know where this is all going and everything like that. The moment he shows up to the fight he has with Rocky Jr. Um, about Rocky Jr., you know, Robert being all upset that he's paying so much attention to Tommy. The whole middle is just, I just find it very uninteresting. It's not where I thought the movie was going. I just find all the stuff with Tommy Gunn is very uninteresting. The training sequences are lackluster. It's almost like I'm just waiting for them to resolve all this. And then, you know, in the third act, I, I do enjoy. I really do enjoy it. It's hard to see Rocky in a light where he's not paying attention to the people he loves most, but also makes him very real, though. Like, I kind of mixed on that. I don't know if that was the best decision to make. Rocky's not flawless, you know what I mean? He has flaws, you know what I mean? But he's just got such a big heart, right? But, you know, Adrian, you know, this really turns him around. I, I also feel like this is the only time I feel like Stallone's performance feels like he's impersonating Rocky rather than really getting into the character at times. It's not through the whole movie. There's some inconsistency with his, with the Rocky character. Where I feel like it's like Stallone impersonating Rocky rather than really getting into that character. Like a Rocky Balboa, he gets into that character, right? He becomes Rocky again. It's only at times in this movie. So that's, that's really one thing that I really noticed watching this movie now. And I got, I, we got to talk some Polly, you know, Polly always being Rocky's best friend. And I just love how he stands up for Rocky. You know, all the mistakes, all the stuff that Polly has done, you know, he's the cause of them going bankrupt, all the stuff he's done in the past. You come to this movie and right at the end, you know, he's just telling Tommy what a piece of garbage he is. You know, Rocky's the real champ. You're a joke. And he takes one right in the freaking, you know, the guy, Tommy knocks his teeth out. And that's, that set, that sets Rocky off. And I just love that, that, music that comes in and then Stallone's like, Oh, you knocked him down. Would you try knocking me down now? Just, Oh, that got me jacked in the movie theater, man. I was just like amped up, ready to go. I go, Oh, here we go. We're going to get a fight. Hell yeah. It's a Rocky movie. It just set something up. Didn't run with it and gave us this Tommy gun character, Rocky being a trainer. Now all this kind of stuff that I don't know. It just didn't work for me as much. I still get a lot of entertainment out of this film, though. It's just that big middle act, you know what I mean? I would love the scene, like, him dealing with this brain damage and how that affects his family and what, what he was going to do and and all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? I just thought they should have ran with that idea. And I know they, were, they wanted the... I think there were some things with the script of why they were filming it. They wanted to change, and there was some stuff behind the scenes and all that kind of stuff, but... Uh, at one point they were going to kill Rocky, then they changed their mind. So yeah, it's just, it's, you know, still a good flick though. And the Elton John song at the end measure of a man's fantastic, uh, for the credit scene and everything. 
just I, I just love that song. That song's so good. It's such a great lyrics. Yeah, I just love the piano in it. Great stuff there. But Rocky Five, all in all, it's not a bad flick at all. It really is not a bad flick. But it went different. It tried something unique, I guess. That's what my son tells me. It's unique, Dad. It's unique. So I'm going to give Rocky Five a B minus. What about you guys? What did you think of this review? What do you think of Rocky Five? Let me know in the comments below. We'll have a great talk about it. And check out all my other Rocky reviews I've done. Go down the rabbit hole. You'll spend some time on the channel. Watch Rocky 1, 2, 3, 4, Rocky versus Drago. And we'll try and wrap this Rocky series up so I can get the Creed 3 because I've been hearing great things about it. But in due time, everyone, in due time. Well, I appreciate you guys watching the review, watching the channel. Thank you so much for your support and all that jazz. And I will see you on the next video and I will see you in the movies. Cheers. Better alive, you are coming with Act me. Hurt me. Nothing is over!